Okay, it's April 14th, 2016, and uh, we are setting up the uh, cloakboard hive to uh, rear some queens. Uh, it's been a up and down spring here, uh, which is usually the case in Maryland. Uh, we had snow on Saturday evening, and it's, the temperatures have been windy, cold, rainy, but it looks like we're going to get a stretch of good weather. So I decided to start up the uh, cloak board. And uh, for those of you not familiar with a cloak board, it is a starter finisher hive all in one. Um, as you can see, the bottom entrance is uh, blocked and the bees are piling up here. I just blocked it off. This is a special uh, bottom board. It's got a entrance in the front and an entrance in the back. The entrance in the back is also blocked. Um, that will be opened uh, uh, the day before uh, the graft. And uh, right now the cloak board is in. This is the cloak board here without the uh, slide. And uh, that provides an entrance. Uh, the bees can come and go as they please. Now for those of you that haven't uh, reared queens before, traditionally most of the folks, at least when they're starting out, myself included, use what they call a swarm box, such as this is your starter hive. Uh, you would make that queenless overnight and then uh, put your grafts in there uh, for the next day. And you would load that up with uh, honey, pollen, uh, water, and uh, tons of nurse bees and your grafts. So if you haven't reared queens before, I recommend you start that way. Larry Connor has a very good book out on it. And I would suggest you read that thing cover to cover and then try that method first um, versus the cloak board. Uh, cloak board advantages, um, well there's disadvantages, you have to buy a cloak board or make one. And I do have a video on making one uh, from last year if you're interested. Um, and uh, you don't need the double entrance bottom board, you could take and lift the hive body and turn it around but since I'm lazy I decided to build a uh, um, bottom board that had two entrances so I don't have to be doing any lifting. The less lifting I do the better I am. So as you can see the bees are figuring it out and they're starting to walk up the front of the hive here. So they are starting to use the other entrance which is good. Now the way you set the cloak board up you got to ensure that your queen is in the bottom with cap brood and open uh, frame for her to lay in uh, while this is going on. The bees in the upper compartment are isolated by that queen excluder so they don't have direct contact with the queen. Um, the top box you got to fill up with uh, at least three frames of open brood and the reason you need the open brood in there is to draw the nurse bees up. You need tons of nurse bees to raise queens. I can't overemphasize that. A lot of people think it's their grafting when they uh, don't get a very good result, but sometimes it's just not enough nurse bees. Um, it takes a lot of feeding uh, for these uh, queen cells, a factor of 10 times more or greater than just for uh, normal worker bee cells. So, and then you have to have pollen, good open frame of pollen and honey and I also put in a uh, feeder one gallon of uh, sugar water as well uh, and what I've noticed in the past they can take almost a gallon a day of that so and also you should also put yourself a, a frame of foundation in there because if a nectar flow starts to go on they can have all kind of comb built out and you will have a lot of webbing between your queen cells not that that's bad but uh, doesn't look very pretty so put a frame of uh, foundation in there and uh, let them draw it out uh, so you set this thing up several days in advance before you uh, do your grafting and let those uh, nurse bees gorge themselves look at the way those bees are running up there so they're figuring it out I just did this a few minutes ago 
Um, so this evening or tomorrow morning I'll probably put the slide in and what that does it's that makes the bees upstairs say hey guys we're queenless we need a queen we need a queen um, the next day you would insert your grafts and take the open uh, brood frames out and put them in a uh, another uh, colony if you have you have one hopefully um, that's the other thing it takes a lot of resources to raise queens you need multiple highs and I mean more than two <laughs> So, um, because you're going to need uh, mating nukes and that requires a tremendous amount of assets from your other hives as well. So, and then after uh, you put your grafts in, uh, they'll be in the upper box for uh, basically overnight or a day and then you can uh, uh, come out and uh, after the graft and remove the slide open the back so the bees in the back here have ways to get out and one of the advantages of this system is that the bees are always able to fly unlike using the swarm box method where they're confined in there for basically almost 24 hours so um, on day two you remove the uh, slide and uh, have both the front and the back closed off. Now your acceptance of the queens will show up pretty evident after the uh, first day. You'll be able to see wax drawn on the queen cells. So um, after about five and a half to six days the cells should be capped. It's highly recommended you take them out of here and put them in a queen incubator or an incubator hive if you have one. Um, I decided to go ahead and build the incubator because um, it just makes it a lot easier on me as well as the bees. And I can keep an eye on them because with an open system like this, if you leave them in there, they're vulnerable. They're vulnerable to a rogue queen coming in there and wiping them all out, which I have had happen, and that is a sickening feeling go in there in day 10 and all your queen cells are chewed up <laughs> so anyway um, that's it for now this is uh, what you want your uh, top box to look like when you do your cloak board method um, as you can see the thing is covered with bees bees are finding the upper entrance here where the uh, slide goes in and I have a frame of sugar water. It's a grafting frame here. Um, it's open brood, open brood, open brood, pollen, honey. So, uh, and a new um, wax foundation. So basically that's what you wanna do when you uh, set up your upper box. Make sure the queen's in the lower box um, or it's not gonna work. So and these bees are gorging themselves we weren't going to let them gorge themselves for a day or so before we insert the real grass right now i just put the uh, uh, cells in there to let them polish them up okay that's it okay it's april 15th uh, 2016 this is an update on the cloak board method um, it is almost noon we have the um, front entrance blocked as you can see we did put the slide in this metal piece right here that is a slide that separates the uh, bottom box from the top box as I told you yesterday the queen resides in the bottom box below the queen excluder so the top box will realize that they're queenless in short order and we also opened up the back here as you recall from yesterday this was closed um, there's a few bees coming out but when the forager bees from the bottom box go out and fly uh, they will leave this uh, back uh, entrance and they will automatically come back to the front one because that's the one they're used to but uh, since it's blocked they'll have to go to the upper box hence we're going to get a ton of bees in the top box in the next uh, well 
by sunset and uh, they'll realize that they're queenless they'll be in a panic so when we insert the queen cells in tomorrow um, morning um, the bees will be anxious to see them and uh, fill them out in short order okay uh, we also uh, put about a half a gallon of sugar water in today the bees are taking it down so we want them to be nice and fat and uh, by the time they're uh, ready to feed these cells okay so that's it for now okay it's April 16th um, this is the day we're going to do our grafting uh, via the, and we're using the cloak board method and I just want to give you uh, guys a uh, tip you should get your uh, stuff set up ahead of time I do mine in the house because it's usually cool out right now it's about 49 degrees outside so I do not graft outside I graft in the kitchen and uh, I put a towel on the table uh, have paper towels that are moist so you can cover your grafts uh, get your grafting tools this one's a JZBZ this is the Chinese grafting tool uh, whichever one suits your fancy uh, also have a little thing of distilled water to uh, use distilled water to keep my uh, grafting tool clean um, also very important to get yourself some royal jelly if you don't have some this is about 50 percent diluted with distilled water and uh, the idea is that you're going to take and put uh, a, a, just a teeny little bit in each cell that ensures that the uh, cells do not dry out before you get them in the hive. Uh, you can dry graft if you're good and you're fast. Um, one thing about grafting, once you start, you got to do it very, very quickly. Um, so I advise you to uh, work fast. I'm only going to do 22 cells. Uh, this is the first graft of the season. Um, we'll see how they turn out. Um, you can do more as you have a stronger hive, but like I said before, you have to have a ton of nurse bees. And um, so there's no sense in putting 40 cells in. Plus, you need a lot of assets in order to support 40 cells if you're going to make mated queens. If you're making queen cells, that's different. Um, but uh, most people are afraid to use queen cells, unfortunately. And uh, for young eyes, you probably don't need this, but. I use a um, magnifier, um, you slip this on your head, you can use it with glasses, without glasses, whichever you like. I think this one's a number three, I'm not sure if that means three power, but it sure does help. And also I have a additional light, um, you need good lighting, you need good eyesight, and if you don't have good eyesight get your some sell some magnifiers and you need a steady hand to graft. Um, grafting is really not that hard. I don't know why people think it's such a big deal. They buy all these doodads, and nicots and all the other stuff. You really don't need that stuff. Um, I'm using the JZBZ uh, plastic cells today. Um, I've used the wax cells too. Um, I don't know if they have a preference for one or another. I haven't really uh, done any studies on that yet. I should probably try that see if they prefer wax versus uh, plastic. I know the bees prefer uh, wax foundation over plastic foundation but uh, the advantage of using these is you can see the royal jelly inside the uh, cells. Uh, the wax you cannot so um, so that's the only advantage I see to using the uh, plastic cells. Okay, the next part of the video, I will just do a little tidbit on uh, the grafting frame, but I won't be able to talk very much because I'll be in the process of grafting and getting the cells back into the hive. So that's it for now. Okay, it's April 16th. This is the day of the graft. Uh, the graft is in. And bees weren't happy with me but uh, I took three open the three open frames of brood removed them shook all the bees off of course and uh, left them in the top box and those uh, 
frames went to another hive. Um, the front, excuse me, it's a bee on me. Um, the front is still closed, the slide is in, and the back is open. So those bees can, in the bottom box, can still get out, but they'll reorient to the front. Okay, so tomorrow we'll check the graphs, see how we did. Like I said, we didn't do that many. Um, just 22. Okay, that's it for now. Okay, it's the day after the graft. I just pulled the uh, graphs up and we got 20 out of 22, which isn't bad uh, for a graft. And as you can see, there's a ton of bees up in the top here. And um, what we're going to do today is we're going to pull the slide out and we're going to put uh, block this entrance here in the back and uh, that will make for a uh, cell finisher um, the nurse bees have done their job so um, the bees will be able to travel from upper box to lower box uh, but there will only be one entrance to the hive and that will be uh, between the two uh, hive bodies and the queen excluder obviously is in there so the queen is downstairs okay that's it for now